Anatomy is the bee's knees, isn't it? But um, Has that expression actually been said aloud by anyone in this century? Feel free to call me old in the comments. Admittedly, I wrote that last part just so I could shoehorn that expression into this video, because if you haven't guessed, we're going to be talking about the knee and its associated injuries. I think a lot of us have heard of torn ACLs before, but may not fully understand what that means. I sure didn't before reading for my anatomy class, so I'm hoping to shed some light. First off, there are three bones involved in the general knee area. There's the femur, patella, and tibia. The femur is the thigh bone, and it connects with the pelvis. Interestingly, the femur kind of extends towards the vertical midline of your body as you get closer to the knee. This is good for balance since it positions the knees closer to the body's center of gravity. Even more interestingly, this tendency of the femur is particularly noticeable in females because they tend to have wider pelves. Yep, that's the plural of pelvis, although pelvises also works. It's possible that this is a reason for the higher number of knee issues reported in female athletes. On the distal end of the femur, that is the end of the femur closer to the knee, there are these two knobby looking things. They're known as the lateral and medial condyles, and they connect with the tibia, a leg bone. There's also another bone that makes up the leg called the fibula, but it's not important for this discussion, so I'll save it for another video. Sorry, fibula. Anyways, between the two condyles is a smooth patellar surface on top of which sits the patella, or the kneecap. Now that we understand all the bones involved, we can look at the various ligaments and cartilages that make up the knee joint. The knee joint is kind of a misnomer as there are actually three joints, one between the patella and the femur, or the femoropatellar joint, and two between the condyles of the femur and the lateral and medial menisci of the tibia. These two are known collectively as the tibiofemoral joint. The menisci, singular meniscus, are just cartilages. In fact, the menisci are also known as semilunar cartilages. A bunch of ligaments exist in the knee. A ligament, by the way, is a piece of connective tissue that connects bone to bone. I'm not going to go over them all because, frankly, we'd be here for too long, but I'll add a link to a good article on the ligaments of the knee in the description if you're interested. We can rotate our knee somewhat when it's not fully extended, but when it is, we really can't. This is because the motion is restricted due to the ligaments and the menisci. The knee joint is a type of synovial joint. This means that it has a cavity filled with something called synovial fluid, which reduces friction and wear and tear in the joint. This cavity is surrounded by a joint capsule. The synovial joint could very easily be the topic of a video of its own, but I briefly mention it now because the knee has a lot of tendons and ligaments that stabilize its joint capsule. Now again, I'm not going to cover all the ligaments, and I'm not going to even attempt to talk about the tendons and muscles that are involved, but I'd like to highlight three particular ligaments fibular and tibial collateral ligaments, and the anterior cruciate ligament, better known as the ACL. The reason I highlight these ligaments in particular is because they're the offending parties in common knee injuries. The knee is very strong. It can bear a lot of force vertically, but it's vulnerable to horizontal forces. The worst is when the horizontal force is applied to a knee that's fully extended, because this can tear the ACL, the tibial collateral ligament, and the medial meniscus. This is a devastating injury referred to as the unhappy triad. Injuries just to the ACL can also happen when, for example, you twist an extended knee as you're running and changing direction quickly. ACLs don't heal very well, so treatment usually involves taking a graft from another connective tissue. 